Let's get started. First, we're gonna add half a cup of warm water into a bowl, followed by a quarter cup of sugar. Then we're gonna mix that sugar until it dissolves into the water, forming a sugar and water solution. Once we've got that done, we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle one tablespoon of dry active yeast on top of that sugar water solution, cover it, put it in a warm place, and let it sit for about 10 minutes until the yeast ferments. Now while that's happening, let's get our other wet ingredients together. In another bowl, you're gonna add a quarter cup of melted butter. Then you're gonna add one cup of evaporated milk. Now you wanna get evaporated milk for this. I think it's the texture that makes a difference here because I've tried other milks and it's just not the same. Gonna mix that together and it's fully mixed it in. And then we're gonna go ahead and add that to the bowl of our um, mix mixer. I'm starting off this dough with my whisk attachment, um, adding um, that milk and butter solution to the bowl. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add um, one teaspoon of lemon extract followed by one teaspoon of lemon rind or um, lemon zest and then I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla essence and mix that all together. Next I'm going to add about a cup of seed flour until it forms a thick um, batter. Once it forms that batter consistency, I'm going to go ahead and switch out my um, attachment and use the dough hook attachment and add the remaining flour, which equals three cups. So you add about one, one and a half cup in the beginning just to get that batter going. That really helps the texture of the tennis roll. And then you add the other two to two and a half cups uh, of flour using the dough attachment on a low speed. Now, obviously this video is sped up, but my dough, um, my KitchenAid mixer is going pretty slow at this point, just trying to mix that into a nice ball. So mix, mix, mix until everything is mixed into a nice smooth ball. You can see that every, all the dough is on the dough hook and I'm gonna just get that off and then I'm gonna knead it with my hand just for a few minutes more just to get that really dense texture that tennis roll has. So I kneaded it into a tight ball and then I'm gonna put it in a greased bowl, cover it and let it sit for 45 minutes until it's doubled in size. Now once it's doubled in size, I'm gonna go ahead and break it off into seven or eight pieces. I did seven pieces here because I really wanted my tennis rolls to be big. Um, my husband likes them really big, so I decided to honor him and make the this batch big for him. But you can really get up to a dozen small tennis rolls or you can get about eight large ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and knead that into a nice round ball a nice smooth round ball and then you're gonna put them on a greased baking sheet I use a cookie sheet because I want them to retain that round shape and I keep them evenly spaced on that cookie sheet to make sure that they're not touching although for some tennis rolls having that like side that doesn't really get brown that's been touching another tennis roll is also a great sign of a good tennis roll so so you're gonna cover that and you're gonna let that sit for another 40 minutes until it doubles in size. While it's sitting, I'm gonna go ahead and make an egg white wash. I'm gonna use this to base the top of the tennis roll and that gives it a really silky finish um, that's um, consistent with tennis roll. So here we are 45 minutes later. You can see it totally doubled in size and I'm gonna go ahead and brush that um, egg wash over these tennis rolls. I'm moving them a little bit to keep them apart 
and then we're going to stick these in the oven. I baked mine at 350 degrees for 25 minutes. Um, I live in Denver, we have a higher elevation, and so I tend to bake things at a little lower temperature. So I'm going to stick these in the oven and see you in a bit. So here we are, 25 minutes later. As you can see, my tennisols are absolutely perfect in color. They're brown all over. Um, they're not burnt. They're sliding easily off that cookie sheet. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rub some butter on the top of my tennis rolls um, just to keep them really nice and soft. So not a lot of butter, just a little bit on the tops to make it nice and soft. And then while it's still hot, I put them in a large Ziploc bag. Um, this also helps the tennis roll to remain very moist while it cools. I've done cooling racks in the past and I always end up getting a really stiff tennis roll. And I don't know if that's because I'm in Denver and it's, it's extremely dry, but this is a little trick I've developed. Don't close the, the bag up or else it's going to sweat and it's going to get sticky, but just stick it in the bag and let it cool that way and it'll be really soft. Now here we are. These are not 100% cool, but they're cool enough that I can slice them open and show you guys the texture inside. It's the perfect tennis roll crumb texture. It has that denseness but softness that tennis roll has. Um, and then I'm going to stuff it with tennis roll's best friend, which is cheddar cheese. This is a Vermont cheddar. It's not the anchor cheddar we're used to in Guyana, but it'll do. Now don't you want to just take a bite out of that? Now go ahead, make yourself some tennis rolls and enjoy. 